Fine Music Breakfast with Annabel Drum. And I hope you're enjoying a Fine Music Breakfast today. This is Friday the 3rd of May and a quick look at the weather at the moment. It is 20 degrees in Sydney and 16 degrees in Penrith. And we're looking for a high of 24 today. It's cloudy. There'll be a bit of rain around morning and afternoon. Possible chance of a thunderstorm. And tomorrow we'll look a sort of similar kind of day. Very similar. Now in the studio this morning, I've got with me a conductor, arranger and composer who has become one of the great backbones of choral music here in Australia. He's worked with many organisations, including the Vienna Chamber Orchestra, Opera Australia and the Victorian State Opera. He's been a staff member at the Vienna and Sydney Conservatoriums, founded the Joan Carden Singing Award way back in 2005, which is still going. And his compositions and arrangements have been performed by the Sydney Symphony and Australian National Orchestra. I'd like to welcome Christopher Bowen. Thank you for the invitation. I'm so pleased to have you here. Thank you so much. Yeah, you've been musical director of the um, Sydney University Graduate Choir. Is it 27 years now? Yeah, 27 years now. Wow. Now, what keeps you coming back? Uh, The prospect of making wonderful music, uh, raising standards, Introducing people, uh, not only the choir members, but also audiences to to new and exciting music, new ways of doing music, uh, always extending the repertoire. It's really just a a lovely adventure. How how do you find your music when you go looking for something new each year? I've always been very, very um, inquisitive and have never been contented with the status quo, so to speak. I was like that when I was studying at uh, the Melbourne Conservatorium, which used to get me into a little bit of trouble. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I, I'd come up with questions about composers that the lecturers were not really aware of. Or, oh, they uh, like to look quite like yes, they know what they're talking so, about. Um, so it's always been uh, that way, uh, not content with, as I said, the status quo. And we have some wonderful people in the choir who also like, love ferreting out strange works and they th- they say, listen to this, listen. Ah, so, that's helpful. it's really great to have an, uh, people within the organisation who have so much enthusiasm. So, so how, how big is the choir? It's about, uh, at its largest, it's about 120. Wow, and, really big. And then we have a smaller choir taken from within the, that larger body. Uh, that's the chamber choir and that... N- Numbers is about 35. Mm, okay. So, yeah. And what is it? So we, it's called the Sydney University Graduate Choir. Yes. Are they, are they all graduates of the university? So they could be any age? Is that They can be any age. Uh, they don't necessarily have to be a graduate of the, uh, the, uh, of the Sydney University. They can be graduates of other uh, universities um, or else they can be uh, people who take an interest in the university itself. So not necessarily music graduates either? N- yeah, no. Okay, just, just really good singers. Good singers, you know, enthusiastic singers um, and really people who do love music. And how, how often do you meet up? Once a week. Once a uh, week, so yeah. towards three concerts a year? About five concerts. Mm, okay, that sounds great because yeah. it probably take a huge amount of work to, to put some of these things together. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Not only uh, musically but also administratively. It, and we fortunately we've got some very, very gifted people and committed people in the choir who spend a lot of time. That's very, very yeah. helpful, isn't it, to yeah, have that absolutely. support. Now, you've got a very interesting composer that you're going to be using in your next concert. Yes. That's in this weekend. That's right, on yeah. Sunday. So uh, uh, his name, Francois-Joseph Gossec. Yes. that right? So, absolutely. And uh, he seems to have been a rather extraordinary survivor of the revolution. Yes. Uh, the he, French Revolution. Yeah, he was born in 1734, I think, and... Um, he wrote the piece that we're performing on Sunday afternoon, uh, his uh, Requiem, uh, when in 1760, so when he was 24. 24 And years it old. caused a huge uh, sensation at the time. And it's a very, very important work because it uh, influenced composers like Mozart. Mozart actually met him uh, during his sojourn in, in, in Paris and was very impressed and I I can't uh, say this for certain, but he, he would have become aware of the Requiem, if not he, he heard it. And you can hear some influences. Uh, ah. And certainly... Because he was only very young, wasn't he, he when he went young, to yeah, Paris? How very, old was Mozart when he went oh, there? Oh, gosh. Like 14 or 15? 14, something yeah. like that. 14 mm. for 16, perhaps. Uh, and Gossek influenced greatly uh, uh, Berlioz. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Gossack's orator- and, or, or, well, his masses and his uh, te deums really influenced um, the, the composers who came after the revolution and um, uh, it has a monumental quality. It's a very, very, very dramatic. I, mean, I was stunned. I continue to be stunned. Um, I'll be going home just to go, <laughs> go, to go, go home through and be the score again and, uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm just amazed. And some of the solos that I've been working with this week uh, have also expressed um, you know, incredulity that, that this work has never been performed. So where, where did you find it? Uh, I was aware of Gossack uh, through some symphonies uh, and also he orchestrated the first version of, uh, of the, uh, the Marseillaise. Right. I did uh, know that. Yes. Though I thought that this mass had actually been written in dedication to the people that had died in the storming yes. of the Bastille. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it must have been right there yeah, in the middle yeah, of the revolution. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Mozart was there earlier? So mm, Mozart was there earlier. Okay, Mozart but he would have heard it. Though. Oh, right, right, okay. right. Mm. His uh, relationship with uh, the revolution was quite considerable in cons- uh, when you consider that he wrote Don Giovanni, mm. which was really about the libert- you know, this uh, um, a character who just said to the authorities, stuff you, mm, mm. I'm going to do what I like. And guess what? I'm prepared to take the consequences. So consequently, Mozart had to write a, a piece, a, a, a morality piece, that's the sextet, after uh, Don Giovanni is dragged off to hell to make sure <laughs> that, the, that everyone knew that if you stepped out of line, you'd get your death. There'd be trouble. It's because the, the, um, Don Giovanni was supposed to have finished just when uh, uh, Don Giovanni is dragged off to hell. Right. Mm. So... It's so, funny, isn't it? So you have to change things around depending on the political that's right. thing. Absolutely. So as we yeah. mm, as we go through the ages, we can change that. Yeah. <laughs> There's quite a few pieces that have changed. So let's have a little piece of the one of his symphonies. Yes. So we've got here a uh, symphony in F major, Opus Twelve, and this is just the first movement from that from Gossack's symphony. <laughs> Such sunny work, isn't it? Just lovely. Have you seen that live, that symphony? No, I haven't. No. 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 So beautiful. There, there's so many, uh, a lot, so many composers like the Gossack. Just you don't hear in the, in the concert hall. No, no. And it's so it's wonderful you're putting out something new because there's there's so many bigger. Uh, performance like organisations within Sydney who um, seem to keep repeating old yes. material that we've all heard and so we don't really want to go back again. No, and we, we like to explore that. Um, even later this year we've got uh, a perform a first performance of uh, The Star of Bethlehem by uh, Reinberger, mm-hmm. who's a German romantic composer. Then uh, also a first performance of Schumann's uh, Mass in C Minor's. So we love love doing music they, like they, that. They haven't been played haven't here been before and performed. Yeah. Wow, yeah. new things. New things. So you've got to join in. Have you got a subscription service, We're, do you know? Yes, we do. There yeah. we go. So if you go to the Sydney Uni grad Great show, wow. website, yeah. That's it. I'm going to tell you what it is at the end of this interview so you can write it down properly. But if you, if you subscribe, then you get to hear new music every time. Absolutely. <laughs> so a bit more with Gossick. Gossick, did he? Um, he didn't work for royalty at all. I mean, he's just an extraordinary talent. Uh, he did it. work for a wealthy, uh, a wealthy patron who was an amateur uh, musician and also a lover of art. And they, he formed his own uh, a series of concerts. Uh, then Gossick actually then uh, formed, along with Ramon, uh, the the concert de, des amateurs. And then later became involved in the concert de spirituel, which was a, mm, the, yep. the only avenue really at the time in, in Paris to present uh, music. And so then, of course, there was he... the opera. Yeah. And so he was devoted to, 
so conducting. many different genres that and, he was yes. writing in. Yeah, um, and still this this whole idea of surviving the revolution. I guess the having not having too thick a royalty connection must have saved his life. Yes, um, though he was quite quite elderly when uh, when the, the revolution did take place. Uh, he must have been what about fifty fifty five or something like that. Um, but he came to he, he came to the fore after the re- revolution mm-hmm. and wrote a lot of what was called civic music, um, music that celebrated the Republic. And, <laughs> it's uh, very appropriate. And his, and his works, um, he wrote a couple of Deums, which are massive, which were obviously were the prototypes for, for Berlioz's um, uh, extravaganza. And then after Napoleon was removed and Louis XVIII ascended, he then was forced to retire. But he had Did a, Louis not like his music? Well, I think, of course, of the associations with the revolution. Oh, I see. Gosh, you just yeah. you can't win, can and you? When it's, he, things are switching from yeah, one to the other, yeah, you're doomed uh, either way if, you, if you're too strong and yeah. supporting something. Um, mm. But this this work is uh, the the requiem is, is 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 an astonishing work because of its variety of styles. You have the grandeur. You even have an off stage brass ensemble. Yep. In the two. Oh, mirror. wow. Okay. And you have a whole orchestra for this. And we have the uh, whole orchestra for it, yes. I uh, have some wonderful musicians and uh, we've got some very fine soloists um, and the choir is absolutely delighted to be singing this work and uh, it's really grown on me enormously. So this is on Sunday, this yes. Sunday, this weekend, 3 p.m. matinee. Yep. And it's at the Great Hall in the University of Sydney. Yes. And tickets are from twenty five to fifty dollars. You can get those on the website, I'm assuming. Uh you can go to the website but also at the door. At the door too. That's yes. it. Yeah. Uh, but we also have a double pass to give away right here at Fine Music. And 102.5, you can go into the draw for that by giving us a call on 94394777 and leave your name and your phone number and say you're interested in coming along to see the Sydney Uni Grad Choir concert on Sunday. And we'll be doing the draw for that after nine o'clock to get a free double pass to go along. It sounds like a wonderful concert. I, uh, I'm sure it's going to be. You're going to draw a big crowd for this one. Oh, we hope to. Yeah, that's so the good. work certainly deserves it. Yeah, it sounds it sounds fantastic. Thank you so much for coming in, Christopher. Thank you, Annabelle. All right.